Welcome back to another episode of Game Development Beyond the Basics. I'm Eric Freeman, and today I'll show you how to fix the dreaded animation foot sliding issue in Unity really quickly before then going through step by step on what each of the settings I changed is doing behind the scenes to make the fix actually work. If all you're interested in is the answer, what you're looking for is to reduce or turn off animation compression on your imported animations and then turn on foot IK on your animator state. Now, let's have some fun digging into what these settings actually do. So if we look around this lineup of characters, we can see that characters of all shapes and body types are suffering from foot sliding. The green character in the front is actually the mesh that came with the animation pack I'm using, and all the animations were designed around his body proportions. Even though the animations are made directly for him and not being retargeted, he still also has the foot sliding issue. So the first step to fixing the animations is to turn off animation compression. As soon as we do, the green character's feet stay fixed in place, however the other characters still suffer from foot sliding. If we pull up the animation clip for this idle animation, we can see that with compression on, there's lots of space between keyframes. This is because, unless the values are different enough, animation compression will strip out keyframes. If we turn off animation compression, it has a keyframe for every single bone for every single frame. While this fixes a foot sliding in some cases, it's still preferred to keep animation compression on, but lower the error threshold to something smaller like 0.25 or so. This is because you don't need all this keyframe data, especially for bones that don't have a lot of change like fingers, because keeping the extra keyframes just bloats the file size and builds and the memory footprint of your game. There's no magic number here, so just play around to get a good balance between the best visuals versus optimal performance. The next step to fix this issue is by checking the foot IK checkbox on the animation state. What this does is apply a small amount of IK to move the feet to where they would be on the source mesh instead of where they are when retargeting the animation on a different character's avatar. Retargeting animations from one avatar to another can introduce small errors in hand and feet positions in the final output animation just because body proportions from one character to the next can be different. Additionally, humanoid animations are translated from raw skeleton bone rotations into muscle space values. Unity's muscle space data is a little strange at first if you've never looked into it before. Essentially, Unity will take all the bone rotation data from the animation, then break it out into separate muscles, which are a per bone, per axis rotation value representing the range of motion normalized somewhere between negative 1 and 1 where one is a muscle fully rotated in and negative one is a muscle fully rotated out. That's what all these curves for in out, down up, twist in out, and stretch are for. They're the individual muscles that make up the animation when converted to muscle space. You can edit the rotation limits for each muscle in the muscles and settings tab on the avatar configuration screen. Here, you can play around with the previewed limits to make sure the different rotations stay in acceptable ranges and you can avoid issues like over-rotating a limb or having the arms clip through the character's body. These values on the double-sided slider here are what get normalized down to negative 1 to 1. This way, it can accurately remap the animation from the source avatar's limits to the target avatar's limits. If you're unsure why Unity uses muscle space, it's because characters can have lots of minor differences in body shape and sizes and you can use these settings so big hulking characters don't clip their arms through their bodies. Additionally, a character wearing high heels will need her feet pointed down at an angle when resting on the ground, while a barefoot character will need their feet pointed forward. Being able to customize the muscle limits of your character helps the quality of retargeted animations match the specific character they're now playing back on. In conclusion, reduce or turn off animation compression to fix sliding feet when the animations are made for your exact character, or adjust animation compression and turn on foot IK to fix feet sliding when dealing with retargeted animations. If you're wondering where I got this variety of characters from, the four characters in the back are some of the monthly freebies from Reillusion's Actor Core, which is a big database full of 3D scanned characters you can use in your games that come fully rigged, including jaw and eye bones, plus tons of facial blend shapes. A lot of them also come with multiple texture variation options. In the front here are two characters I made using Reillusion's Character Creator 4 software, which is a character creation suite similar to something like Adobe Fuse, but with way more flexibility when it comes to being able to create your own morph sliders, import and automatically transfer weights to clothing, full facial rigging and expression blend shape support, and a whole lot more. 
In the past, I used Adobe Fuse to create characters for my tutorials, but felt the software was quite limited with lack of jaw, eye bone, or facial blend shapes. I played around with the trial for Character Creator 4 to create the characters in this tutorial, and so far I'm really impressed by the flexibility of the software, ability to automatically bake LODs during export, and tight integration with Unity. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in tutorials on character pipeline topics, since playing around with these tools has given me a lot of inspiration for future videos. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Once again, I'm Eric Freeman, and this has been Game Development Beyond the Basics.